Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great weekend. It is winding down. It is back to work tomorrow on Monday. In the meantime, I've got a couple of things that I wanted to add to the Michael Irvin situation. It was incredible seeing him yesterday at the uh, CSA show in Chantilly, Virginia. Uh, Michael Irvin is that same guy. Um, I think, I think I understand a little bit more about Michael Irvin after seeing him yesterday. Um, again, the limelight is everything. You know, Michael Irvin has been the playmaker. Michael Irvin has been that guy in the locker room, you know, all his life. And football has been his life. And having NFL Network and ESPN taken away from him, you can see that that's a big void in his life. That's, you know, his joy. That's the thing that he wakes up and is enjoys more than anything else and being around the people. I think yesterday was as good for him as it was for the rest of us and having a few moments to actually talk with him and things like that was, was truly incredible. Now there's still questions that, that are lingering and I have been fortunate enough um, to have had people reaching out to me um, about this case. And I had a person reach out to me today. Um, Michael Brooks, former NFL player, teammate of his as well. And Michael had let me know, because here's the thing that's interesting to me, and I'm, I'm still kind of curious. Why haven't the three witnesses who were in the bar that spoke to, well, one to me, um, as well as um, the TMZ, how come they were never interviewed by Marriott or the NFL? More importantly, how come the person who was with Michael leading up to this was never interviewed by the NFL or Marriott? Because I want you to think about this. Let's say I have a party at my house and somebody leaves the establishment or leaves my house drunk, has an accident. The police are going to want to know where did you get the alcohol and I could be liable for allowing a person leaving my home drunk and having this accident, correct? And at this point, the only people who made judgments against Michael Irvin talked to only Marriott and Marriott employees. They never talked to Michael Irvin. They never talked to any of the witnesses, and they didn't talk to Michael Brooks. Michael said to me, he said, I picked up Mike at 7 p.m. that night and dropped him off at 11. Nobody has reached out to me to talk to me about that night. When, te when With teammates, you try to protect their privacy, but too many people have mentioned he was drunk, and that's not true. His only mistake is being too nice. If he was an asshole like some former players and didn't talk to people, he'd be okay. Um, there's another point in here because we had a conversation back and forth. Um, so we have a witness here, and he said that he had one or two drinks at most. And here's the thing I can say when you think about this situation, because when you're Michael Irvin, everybody recognizes you, everybody talks to you. And at some point, at some point, everything just becomes just like, whew. you don't remember every conversation. You don't remember every person that you saw. And it's kind of like, okay, I, I know I get like that. People come up, hey, Mark, you know, I, it's like, yeah, I remember you. And it's like, I, I'm sorry, but it's hard to when you meet and go through a whole lot of people. And that's the other thing Michael said that was actually really interesting. He said, think about this. They never talked to the person who was with him hours leading up to the incident, and they never talked to the three guys with him 
uh, before the incident. Do you really think they're trying to find out the truth? It's easier just to say he was drunk to make the case look better. They say he was drunk um, and has said things to her and didn't remember, but he wasn't drunk enough to remember not to take pictures inside of the hotel, and he asked everyone to go outside for a pic. So that's where you kind of wonder, how come nobody talked to any of those? And so this was kind of my thought here, and this is kind of crazy. I don't know. You might say this is a conspiracy theory or what have you. But here's the thing that's kind of interesting. You may remember a couple of weeks ago, Stephen A. Smith was saying about ESPN, which is about to lay off more people. They're about to lay off more people again, and they have been doing this for years. They have been downsizing and cutting back from where they were because the views are down. They are. They've gotten rid of a lot of people that make a whole bunch of money. And I dare say that, Everybody is now gravitating more and more towards YouTube. It's kind of like, you know, we used to read newspapers and magazines, but that's become old news. It's slowly been dying. And now everything is going to YouTube. Now, here's the thing that's kind of interesting is, is it conceivable that the ESPN and NFL Network, which are downsizing their staff, because viewership is down, that they looked at this as an opportunity of, well, we've got a reason to let Michael Irvin go. And then we don't have to buy out the contract. We don't have to do that, you know, that breakup. We don't have a breach of contract. We can say, hey, you did, and save some money. Because here's the thing that's kind of crazy right now is, and, and we've seen this because old media versus new media YouTube and social media is blowing up. The difference of watching ESPN is, is like going to a general practitioner. You know, they know a little bit about everything. You know, you go to ESPN, they got baseball, they got hockey, they got, you know, final four, they got everything. But in today's day and age, you rather watch exactly what you want to see. You don't want to bother about hockey. You're a Dallas Cowboy fan. I want my Dallas Cowboy fix. I've got my certain personalities that I like, and I want to get it from them because I believe in them, and it's that personal relationship. And that is killing the ESPNs. It is literally killing ESPNs in, in the different shows. And to prove this point, I want to show you some numbers here, which are actually blew my mind let's take a look at this this is from wikipedia but i want you to look at in 2018 undisputed averaged 165,000 views viewers a day 2019 uh and and in 2019 through august 169,000 per day in 2021 the show averaged 199,000 viewers per day Uh, during the month of October, which beat the previous peak of 182,000. As of November 2022, their highest rated broadcast was 499,000 viewers. Okay, you say, hey, they're growing. That's great. That's undisputed, right? First take. First take February of 2021. Okay. Okay. They were up 22%, and they averaged 445,000 viewers. I wish I had that kind of viewership, personally. That's just me. But that's the most watched February since 2018. Okay? So you think, okay, so they're getting a half a million viewers a day. Well, that's, that's nothing to sneeze about. But here's the thing I want you to think about, because I was looking at what hosts make and things like that. A average host at ESPN makes $125 an hour. Now that's not to say that Stephen A. Smith to make, you know, 12 million is, you know, different than the everyday regular host. But with that, you have the studios, you got the cameramen, you got the directors, you've got the content creators, you got the lighting people, you've got the makeup, you've got the, the, the whole building, you've got, you know, 
all of these peoples, you know, you've got the president of ESPN. You have so much stuff that's there that has to be taken care of to put on those shows. Let's look at something else that's interesting here. Marcellus Wiley, who left Fox Sports, you know, uh, you know when, when they decided to go ahead and go to uh, speak and bring in Shady McCoy, who's ass-ass. He's only been doing YouTube for a couple of months, okay? This is per Social Blade. This is a way you can look through and see, you know, get an idea of numbers and things like that. And literally in about two months, he's up to 56,000 subscribers with over 5 million views of his videos. And he's averaging, after only doing this for two months, 93,000 views. Now you're looking at it and saying, well, ESPN's got a half a million a day. Yeah, but he just started. He's a personality. He's not a huge name. I'm sorry, Marcellus, don't, don't get mad at me. I mean, he's a TV personality. And it's going to grow. You see how the numbers are growing for him. 600 a day, 900, 700, 600, 800, 300, 500, 1,200. He is growing at, at amazing speed. He just got here. So here's the thing. Let's look at Pat McAfee. ESPN's first take, their flagship show. 499 views a day. Take a look at Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee is averaging 1.3 million views a day. If you take um, the ad revenue, which is about $10 per thousand views roughly for a show of that caliber, you can see how much money that that basically makes. Pat McAfee's channel, just from ad revenue, not sponsors, not sponsors or anything like that, is making about $4 million easily just from YouTube rad ad revenue. He's getting two and a half times the views of what ESPN's first take does. And you start looking at this and saying, because you have people that look and say, I'm a journalist. You know, I am, you know, this guy. Excuse my language, Pat McAfee, but, you know, I got I to gotta pull the Pat Peyton Manning. You know, when he talked about his place kicker. An idiot kicker. A kicker. And I'm assuming that he didn't go to school for journalism or for sports broadcasting or anything like that. Pat McAfee has become... The go-to guy. He's wrestling on TV last night. He's, you know, been put on for uh, putting on the Pro Bowl. His star is rising through the roof. He is destroying, literally, what ESPN and NFL Network. He has Aaron Rodgers on his show every single week. Breaking news. What do you think Michael Irvin could do? The question is, does ESPN need Michael Irvin or does Michael Irvin need ESPN? Because I can guarantee you, if Michael Irvin, the playmaker, started doing podcasts, started doing YouTube, it would be huge. It'd be Cowboys all the time. Guarantee you. It would blow the money he was making, which I think was $3 million from ESPN. It would literally blow that away, having the charisma and the credentials that he has. Yeah. So the problem for me is, well, it's not a problem for me, but the question would be is, if you're Michael Irvin and wanting to get your life back you know, with ESPN and NFL Network, how good do you feel about them not even asking you what happened, not listening to any witnesses, literally throwing you under the bus? Are you sure that that's the people that you want to work for? See, things are different now. Ten years ago, 
If you're an ex-football player, you hope that you could get on a, a gig on NFL Network or ESPN. That's not the only route any longer. YouTube, which is now partnered with the NFL, and now showing games, it's a whole new different world right now. And you put in the work, you will reap the benefits of it. And Michael Irvin easily would be a rock star. Take a look at Mike Tyson's show. Mike Tyson, totally, totally much watch YouTube TV. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And um, I can't wait to see how all this thing kind of goes. I believe that Marriott has to answer some questions in the suit, I believe, this week. Um, either the d- different filings that need to be done, so we may learn a little bit more about this this week. And um, whenever we find out anything else, we will be sure to bring it to you. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you.